For our second city, we chose to come to Cabazon, California, a city all three of us had been before, and the city Paul and I stopped in several times in the last 17 years. Cabazon is a census-designated place in Riverside County, California. 2,535 people called Cabazon home in 2010. Located in the desert, Cabazon is a place that many people choose to retire. These days it's hard to say if that's still true, since Cabazon isn't quite the place that it used to be, at least according to several people in town. Many people who grew up in Cabazon, however, still do call it home. Even if Cabazon may not have as many people choosing to retire there as it once used to, it's still a very strong community with a lot of people knowing each other. Cabazon is just under 5 square miles, with all of its neighbors a little bit of a drive down the 10. It stands alone in the desert. At 1,834 feet, Cabazon's closest neighbor is the city of Banning, which is still five miles away. Banning is actually where we stayed when we filmed at this special, because there actually were no hotels in Cabazon other than the Morongo, which wouldn't allow Violet to stay since she's under 18 years old. We planned on making the Morongo part of this video, however since they're currently playing it safe, that ended up not happening. Cabazon was initially established as an unincorporated settlement in the 1870s after the Southern Pacific Railroad built a station there. The station was originally named Jacinto, but was renamed Cabazon after the Spanish name of a nearby Indian ranchera. In the late 19th century, a workers' camp known as Hall's Siding, which included a hotel and dance hall, developed. It was abandoned after the railroad relocated its facilities. In 1884, a new town was laid out by the Scottish-owned Cabazon Land and Water Company, which established a fruit farm. Some lots were sold, but were later repurchased. The large plot of land stayed intact until it was bought by a developer in 1910. The developer established a school and a post office, but was unable to attract many residents. Cabazon was incorporated as a city on November 1, 1955. Under California law, incorporated cities could host card rooms, while incorporated areas could not. Some businessmen hoped that the card rooms would attract new residents and businesses. During the next 16 years, the city struggled with scandal, political instability, and stalled growth as card room operators vied with other landowners and residents for control of city government. In its first seven years, a succession of 18 police chiefs and 21 city council members served for short terms in the city. A key dispute was between residents who hoped that Cabazon could be developed as a resort city like Palm Springs to the east versus card room owners who wanted to keep Cabazon's population low so that the city's government operating expenses and their taxes would remain low and not impinge on their profits. Only 16 years after first becoming a city, on September 14, 1971, the city voted in a special election to once again disincorporate in 1972. Cabazon has one way in and one way out, so any accidents on the highway can make several people late for supper. Cabazon is known for three main things, the Morongo Casino, the outlets, and the dinosaurs exhibit. Cabazon used to have a few Ma and Pa restaurants, but because so many fast food chains came to town with the outlets opening up, most of those places have faded into Cabazon's history. There are two outlet malls in Cabazon that bring people near and far to the town. The Desert Hills Premium Outlets, which opened in the early 90s, and the Cabazon Outlets that opened in 2001. Between the two outlets, there are nearly 200 specialty and name brand retailers, some of those being the only outlet in a brand's profile. With so many people in every direction nearby, the outlets pull many people into Cabazon. Although the outlets bring many people to town, there's actually a lot more to Cabazon than just shopping. In this day and age, fixating on screens has become a normal pastime for adults and especially children. 
COVID-19 has kept many summer plans at a standstill. More than ever do you see more kids outside playing ball, riding bikes, and skateboards. They're trying to still have fun and capture those summer memories that never really fade away. Children are resilient. Count on them to make the best of the situation. One place that Candace and I would always stop at was an old shop called Hadley's. Like many other things in town, Hadley's fruit orchid changed a lot over the years, and we were surprised when we came back to see that it had moved to a much smaller store out of the giant warehouse that it used to be located in. Hadley's has always been famous for its date shakes. We got a date shake and a date and banana shake. In the winter months, Cabazon will dip as low as the 30s and 40s every night, while in the summer, it goes as high as the 90s. While we were there filming, it was actually 99 degrees, which wasn't a lot of fun. It rains an average of 32 days a year in Cabazon, which makes it a pretty dry place to live. There's an average of just over three people living in each house in town. Cabazon has its own fire department, Station 24, which was built on donations and hard work. Some people in town describe Cabazon as a paradise, while others haven't had as good of an experience. With so many people coming and going through the town, usually in a matter of minutes or hours, Cabazon tends to be treated like a giant trash can. Trash piles up in the streets and lines the outskirts of town, also cluttering up at favorite spots the locals go to try to relax. Several wild animals run through the streets of Cabazon, and in the two days that we spent in town, we saw a dozen stray dogs and even a pig crossing the street. Because so many stray dogs are loose in the city, many of them also end up getting hit by cars or killed in other ways and can be found around town for a while before animal control can come and pick them up. It's truly heartbreaking seeing their bodies lying on the side of the road. It was a warm and windy day when we decided to visit the Cabazon dinosaurs on our trip. This was the first time Violet had seen anything like this. She was curious, but cried sometimes, especially when we came upon the robotic dinos. Within the park is a dino dig, where you can hunt for specific rocks for a prize at the end. It's harder than it looks. There is also a mini rock and gem mining station. There is a mist that blows in certain areas to keep you cool during your time on the trail. The Morongo Casino isn't the only tallest structure in Cabazon. A T-Rex standing at 65 feet tall and a brontosaurus at 150 feet long, 
share the sky in this desert valley town. Claude Bell, a very talented sculptor and theme park artist for Knott's Berry Farm, started the construction of these dinosaurs in 1964. His idea was that the dinosaurs would help bring in more customers to his restaurant, the Wheel Inn, which closed in 2013. This type of novelty architecture was created by shaping metal grid into dinosaur shapes. It was then covered in shotcrete to ensure its lifespan for years to come. You probably remember seeing these dinosaurs in Pee Wee's Big Adventure. They make several cameos in pop culture. There is a small museum and gift shop inside the brontosaurus. The roadside attraction called Cabazon Dinosaurs is pretty hard to miss. In 1871, the railroad received its first land grant, and from that day on, the area began to grow and became a community. Cabazon takes its name from Cabeza, or Big Head in Spanish. There was a powerful Indian chief here who had an extraordinarily large head and he was known as Chief Cabazon. People described Cabazon as being in the middle of everything. Residents of Cabazon enjoy living in the city due to its close proximity to other tourist destinations, such as Palm Springs, Anaheim, and Los Angeles. Cabazon has been the site for many movies and music videos, with its scenic backdrops and iconic attractions. Snakes can be found everywhere in Cabazon, as can scorpions and spiders that rival those found in some horror movies. It's a place where you'd be smart to wear closed-toed shoes and where you should always watch where you step. Cabazon is a gem in the desert and a place you'll pass by time and time again. But next time you roll through, stop and enjoy the sights, the shopping, and the dinosaurs because this little town has more to offer than most people realize.